we're living in incredibly dramatic times, so of course I'm finding uh, all kinds of inspiration in current events, uh, mm. not necessarily directly, but somehow um, the whole um, way things are playing out seems to be uh, a part of a long unfolding story that I'm used to making a part of my, my work, you know, so yeah. yeah, very exciting times for sure. They are. You would no doubt be meeting all kinds of inspiring people all the time. What have been some of the great kind of surprises musically that you know you just wouldn't have had if if you weren't where you are? Well, for one thing, I remember um, ten years ago I was uh, happy to be included in a, a Puta Mayo compilation called Mali to Memphis, mm -hmm. and. Um, when that record was released, I happened to be in the same place as one of the musicians featured on that album, mm. Habib Pote from Mali. And yeah. we did a, a short promo tour and got to be friends and always said that we would like to collaborate. And that collaboration finally came to pass. I spent eight days in Mali, in Bamako, his hometown, wow. yeah. uh, just a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, And we recorded an album that will be uh, available later this year sometime, but that was a dream come true, and uh, yeah. that was certainly something that uh, has a lot to do with what we were just talking about. Great. And when you were playing uh, with people in Mali, was there a, a strong sense of um, some of those uh, very ancient roots of what became the blues for you? Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, to actually be able to perceive it uh, before I traveled to West Africa, for sure, but to actually experience it in West Africa was a, uh, an epiphany. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ease with which I uh, was able to make music uh, with Habib in his home place uh, and also feel somewhat uh, at home uh, in West Africa, in Mali uh, mm -hmm. specifically, was uh, a real revelation. Not a surprising one, but nonetheless a thrilling one. Yeah, well, yeah, quite a few people have tried to, I guess, make that journey and connection. Um, I'm not really sure about the technical side of it, but um, is it the case that the pentatonic scale is, you know, basically yeah. uh, still used and, and has always been used in that part I of the world? I felt, uh, yes, yes, that's part of it. I think, um, Let's face it, you know, the blues is certainly a, a hybrid, if you will, uh, 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 a meeting of uh, several cultures, but the root and the uh, dominant part of blues expression, at least the blues that was recorded uh, at the beginning of the last century, mm -hmm. um, that music is strongly African, more mm -hmm. African than anything else. Mm, mm. And um, and that was something that I could really feel while I made uh, this record with Habib, that without struggling to find common ground, we had a language in terms of uh, musical orientation that just seemed to mesh without much uh, uh, ado at all. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and I'm... Also curious to, to find out about who might be, if anybody, uh, will, will be accompanying you uh, through your Australian tour. Do you have any musicians um, who are, who are ca coming yes. to play with you? Well, I'm going to be touring this time again with uh, a wonderful guitarist who I uh, came out with last time I was in Australia. He's from Sweden. His name is Stefan Asner. Yes. And uh, he, was he was featured on that album, Troubadour Live, that was my last major release. Yep. And uh, a great musician and uh, somebody who uh, I continue to grow with musically and find new ways of, of making uh, uh, the songs come alive. So I'm really excited about this tour because uh, it'll be a, a reunion of, of sorts. Sounds fantastic. And is there something, I mean, one of the things that kind of really hits home to me uh, when listening to your music is you know, there's a degree of um, sort of, uh, there's a level of emotion. I I'm sure that you, you've uh, moved people, you know, quite deeply with, with performances. What is your sort of uh, ultimate sort of achievement? When do you know you've really done your job in live performance? 
Well, I can tell you I had an experience last night that was probably way at the top of, uh, of the, the, the scale when it comes to what I want to do, which is basically commune with the audience and mm. have the music be a way of, of uh, making us appreciate something that we're all a part of uh, in the music and beyond the music. And sometimes if the show is divided into two halves, I can already tell when I'm back in the dressing room at the, the midpoint from the buzz that comes over the, the intercom, I can tell from the energy level in the, uh, in the lobby that uh, we're really making that connection, and that's a really nice feeling. That's great. And you, you also have um, a fairly sort of high... Um, a sophisticated um, level of, of ideas in, in your songwriting, in your lyrics. Do, how do you find um, that goes in sort of working with more kind of basic human emotions? Is it something that you have to try to balance, or do you find that you can easily put um, very heavy uh, ideas together with pure emotions? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, I'm finding it... Um more and more easy because I've had a, enough experience uh, successfully putting all those ingredients together. So I'm relaxing about it. I don't strain. Um, but what I do notice is that um, more and more, yep. looking at older material, I find that there's a real subtle sophistication to a lot of old blues lyrics that might have escaped me when I was younger. Mm. And I realized that I'm drawing, I'm drawing on a tradition that already has uh, mm. baked into it that mm. ability to put complex human experience into uh, simple colloquial, you know, uh, phrases that still uh, escape being, you know, banal. And that's mm. a tricky thing. And I don't think you can analyze it. I think you just have to absorb enough of what's already mm. been written. And, and try to somehow get on that wavelength. Dylan is really good at that, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think that it's clear uh, from anybody who, who has taken the time to observe that you, are, are t you know, you, you're very true to your own kind of artistic instincts, um, you know, which has sure to, it's got to be part of your sort of reason for being inspired in an ongoing way. Um, can you maybe talk yeah, about that? Yeah, that's true. Hmm. I've been fortunate in that I haven't had a lot of commercial pressure on me, hmm. uh, external, to, uh, to conform to something that's not natural for me. So uh, in that sense, I feel very, very uh, privileged and, and fortunate to still be enjoying the degree of success that I have without having um, the negative, uh, you know, aspects of success, meaning external pressure to, to sell product for somebody else's agenda. So uh, I feel very fortunate there. Great. Um, one of the songs that you play that I uh, have a very uh, tender spot for is The Cape by Guy Clark. I, I just love Guy Clark's yeah. songs. Um, what, uh, what, what grabbed you about that song originally? Um, I heard that song some time ago, uh, and then it was uh, that wonderful presenter on ABC, Angela, um, who said, Eric, I think you should have a good look at uh, covering Guy Clark's The Cape. And I went back and I listened to the song and realized that she was right. It really fit me like a glove. Yeah. And I've been opening my shows with that song uh, for a long time now, and it just my dad commented on it last night, and he said, what a great opener. Yeah. And uh, I'll keep doing that, yeah. Fantastic. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing you, and, uh, yeah, please keep doing what you're doing because it's truly inspiring, and I really appreciate the chance to talk today. The same to you, and I really think your questions were uh, the, the best that I've had in a very long time, so, so thank you for that. That means a lot. Thanks very much. Okay, okay. safe travels. Take care, then. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.